Good morning. So, we were discussing regarding cycles of uh, internal combustion engines and we have given the expression for the for the efficiency of three very important cycles which are used in internal combustion engine. One is auto cycle, one is diesel cycle, another is dual combustion cycle. Sometimes it is also called mixed combustion cycle or limited pressure cycle. All right. So, <coughs> uh, we have got the expression for all the cycles. Now, we can make some sort of a comparison between the cycle. I can, I think that is bit interesting to see. Now, if we uh, want to make some comparison, there should be a basis. So, the basis of comparison first case, we can think that uh, let us take air because these are all air standard cycles. Let us take, let us take air at the same condition and let us have same compression ratio. So, if we do that, let us say this is our PV diagram. So, we have got, <coughs> we have got one to two, sorry, let us say this is our point two, then Okay, let me try to draw it once again. So, this is our PV plane. We are having the compression from point 1, then we are having the combustion in auto cycle, and then we are having expansion and heat rejection. So, 1 this is your point 1, then point 2, point 3 and point 4. So, this is your auto cycle. Now, <coughs> if we select the criteria for comparison between different cycle that we will have the same starting point 1 and same compression ratio. So, in that case, our uh, our um, uh, diesel cycle will be something like this 1 to 2 that will be common point for all the cycle. Then let us say this is 3 dash 4 and 1. So, let me write same starting point or starting state condition whatever you may call it and identical identical compression ratio so this is the condition for comparison and we have 1 2 3 4 1 this is your auto cycle, then 1, 2, this will be common, then 3 dash 4, 1, this will be your diesel cycle. And then, if we have got a dual combustion cycle, so we have to go up to certain point along the constant volume line and then there will be a constant pressure heat addition also. So, we, we will come somewhere here. So, we will have 2, 2 prime, 3 double prime and then 4, 1 like this. So, 1, 2, 2 double prime, 2 prime, 3 double prime, 4, 1, this is dual combustion cycle. Alright. So, what we can see that we are having <coughs> we are having the uh, area of different cycles that will be different and the maximum area we will get in case of auto cycle 
then we will have diesel cycle sorry then we will have dual combustion cycle and then we will have diesel cycle. So, maximum output we will get from the auto cycle then our dual combustion cycle and then our diesel cycle. So, if we have the same compression ratio for all the three cycles. Now, we know that we do not have same compression ratio for all the three cycles. If all the three cycles are having same compression ratio, then this happens or then this comparison is valid, but generally we do not have same compression ratio for all the three cycles. We have less compression ratio for auto cycle, but diesel cycle and dual combustion cycle, those are suitable for CI engines, compression ignition engine, where we can go for a higher compression ratio. Another way of comparing the cycles is that what maximum temperature in the cycle you can allow, because the material that has to withstand the maximum temperature. All right. So, from that point of view, one can again make some comparison and what could be the maximum temperature of the cycle, keeping that constant whether we can do some analysis or not. Well, let us say uh, we will have P V and then this is your auto cycle so 1 mm, let's say this is 2 this is 3 and this is 4 all right now <coughs> if this point where the maximum temperature will occur in auto cycle, if we want to keep it fixed for other two cycles also, that means diesel cycle and dual combustion cycle. So, then our diesel cycle will be something like this. So, that means 1, 2 dash, 3, 4, this will be our diesel cycle. All right. So, let me write this is 1, 2, 3, 4 auto, 1, 2 dash 3, 4 diesel and then <coughs> we will have dual combustion cycle. So, in dual combustion cycle what we will do? we will go up to certain point and then let us put it by some other color we will have this one all right so in all the cases point 3 is common in all the cases we will have point 3 as the common point so 1 2 double prime then let us have 3 prime let us say another 3 I am bringing here 3, 4 and 1 in all these cases 1 will be there for completion of cycle. So, this is your dual combustion cycle <coughs> all right. So, you can see in this case diesel cycle gives maximum output, then dual combustion cycle and then auto cycle. So, what we can see that auto cycle and diesel cycle are two extreme cases of cycle and obviously, dual combustion is a is having mixed features of or uh, combined features of both the cycles. So, it will have somewhere in between all right. So, <coughs> these are the different thermodynamic cycles used for internal combustion engine. In actual case, the cycles will be much different as we have discussed earlier. 
I mean I have shown that actual cycle diagram will be uh, much different compared to this thermodynamic cycle diagram. Actual cycle diagram suppose with an engine you have got indicator mechanism and from there you can get the actual cycle diagram PV diagram of the cycle that will be much different. Okay. <coughs> and obviously, from there using the indicated diagram and the fuel consumption one can get indicated efficiency that will be much lower compared to the thermodynamic cycle efficiency. Okay. So, obviously, our um, cycle efficiency will be lower in case of internal combustion engine what we calculate from air standard cycle. That is why well there are different techniques by which one can overcome some of the um, some of the shortcomings and have a higher cycle efficiency like supercharging, turbocharging etcetera one can do. <coughs> so, we will not go into those practical aspects. Uh, considering the background of yours that you have already done uh, the components, different systems of the uh, engines. So, probably short discussion regarding those will not be much helpful to you. So, now we will go to another type of cycle which is also uh, air standard cycle, but that is not used for internal combustion engine, but that is used for your gas turbines. Sometimes people want to call gas turbines also internal combustion engine uh, or internal combustion cycle because here the combustion takes place within <coughs> a very compact arrangement and uh, it is not like that we have got some sort of a separate and uh, elaborate arrangement like a boiler as it is used in steam power plant. So, a gas turbine power plant it is basically we will have this arrangement, we will have a compressor which will take air from the ambient and then it will compress it to the required pressure and this high pressure and high temperature gas or air that will be sent to some combustion chamber where fuel will be injected, liquid fuel will be injected. Okay. So, combustion will take place. So, further rise will be there in the temperature of the gas and then this high temperature gas will be sent to a turbine where it will expand while passing through the blade passage. And then at the end of the turbine, the gas has done its work and it is not suitable also for further combustion because it is full of carbon, carbon dioxide. Now, uh, oxygen quantity has uh, deteriorated or it has become less. So, it has to be sent to the ambient atmosphere again. So, this is the cycle. So, uh, one can write let us say this is 1, this is 2, this is 3, this is 4. Okay. And what I have shown that turbine and compressor they are mounted on the same shaft that means whatever power is developed by the turbine, part of it will be utilized for running the compressor. Generally, all these things turbine, compressor and uh, the combustion chamber, they are actually located and within a compact geometry they are located, particularly for, for power plant which are attached to mobile systems like aircraft or maybe a she going vessel. So, it is in a compact uh, <coughs> compact structure all these things are there. Of course, there are uh, land units, land power plants which are stationary power plant, there one can have slightly elaborate arrangement. 
Now, let us see the difference between this cycle and the other cycles. Now, <clears throat> in both the cases like what we have discussed in uh, for internal combustion engine and what we are discussing for this gas turbine, in both the cases we have got gas as the working fluid. So, the gas basically is air and in which some combustion has taken place. So, the product of combustion that is what is going through the turbine and through the compressor only air is passing. So, air and air with uh, I mean after the combustion the product of combustion that becomes the working fluid all right. So, in case of uh, internal combustion also it is so and in case of gas turbine also it is so there is that is why there is some similarity because working fluid in both the cases are same. But there is a great difference in internal can combustion engine within the same chamber the piston cylinder chamber the entire uh, cycle takes place. All the different processes of the cycle that takes place inside the same chamber. Here for a particular process we have got a particular component. So, compression will take place in the compressor then combustion if we if we think it to be a heat addition process that will take place in another place and then the then the expansion that will take place in another component. So, what happens in case of internal combustion engine we can see that pressure and temperature that continuously varies in the chamber where the cycle takes place. Okay. So, here if we take any component there the at a particular point the pressure temperature remains constant. So, these are steady flow devices. If we do not consider the transients during the operation, transient may occur during start up, during stopping of the shutdown of the engine, during some sort of disturbance in the operating condition. If we forget that for the time being, then this is a steady flow device everywhere at any point we will have same properties throughout the running of the device. So, what does it mean? The temperature highest temperature that will occur at a particular point only all right. The lowest temperature again will occur at a particular point. In case of IC engine internal combustion engine reciprocating internal combustion engine it is not like that. There we will have a fluctuation of temperature. Is it good or bad? It is good in one way because suppose we are attaining a maximum temperature quite high, but after some time again the temperature is low. So, it will have time to cool down, but here a particular component in case of gas turbine will be subjected continuously to a very high temperature. So, from the material point of view the maximum temperature which we can achieve in internal combustion engine cannot be achieved in our gas turbine power plant from simply from material point of view. But we know that higher the maximum temperature of the cycle higher is the cycle efficiency. So, obviously, we will lose in cycle efficiency all right. So, this is one very important aspect one has to keep in mind. Then <coughs> it has got number of differences with other steady flow cycle like Rankine cycle. So, we will discuss it later on, but let us look into this. The way I have shown the cycle it is an open cycle, it is not a closed cycle. See, we are taking certain air and uh, at condition 1 or state 1, we are compressing then changing its um, uh, composition and combustion is taking place, then it is expanding and the air at the end of the cycle we are getting at a condition 4, which is different from 1. So, the cycle is not a closed cycle, it is an open cycle, all right. 
So, this is another factor which decreases the efficiency of the cycle. Okay. We have to remember that internal combustion engine cycle for reciprocating internal combustion engines are also open cycles. Okay. Open cycle efficiency will be lower compared to the efficiency of an equivalent closed cycle. All right. But when we want to discuss the the uh, uh, or want to analyze the air standard cycle, we have to convert it into a closed cycle. So, if we want to convert it into or want to have the equivalent closed cycle, then what we are doing? We are assuming some sort of imaginary heat exchange process, which is a cooling process. Okay? And then we are connecting 4 and 1 and this combustion process also we are replacing by a heat addition process. All right. So, we will have basically Q 1 this is W net some network is we are getting and then we will have 1 and 2, 3, 4 and here again we will have another device which will allow the gas to reject it. So, Q 1 is the heat addition at high uh, high temperature from a high temperature body and Q 2 is the heat rejection to a low temperature body. So, this is the uh, air standard equivalent of the actual gas turbine cycle. Now, let me tell you the gas turbine cycle is known as Brayton cycle. it has got another name also, it is called Joule cycle. So, either we call it Breton cycle or we call it Joule cycle. All right. So, <coughs> we will have this type of arrangement for basic Breton cycle. All right. And then we can have the PV diagram. So, basically what we are doing in this case, we are taking <coughs> air at a low pressure and temperature, then we are compressing it. So, basically we are doing it like this 1, then 2 and then we are adding heat. We are adding heat when the gas is flowing through this heat exchanger. So, obviously through the pipe there will be some pressure drop generally which is neglected. So, this is a constant pressure heat addition. So, we will have a constant pressure heat addition. All right. And then we are having heat expansion in the turbine. So, this is the expansion in the turbine. And then last process again there is heat rejection through a heat exchanger we are idealizing this as constant pressure heat rejection so we are having constant pressure heat rejection so 1 2 3 4 isentro isentropic compression constant pressure heat addition isentropic expansion and constant pressure heat rejection. So, this is what we will get <coughs> and uh, well, if we want to have the T s diagram, sorry, this is this is T and this is S. So, 1 to 2 is like this isentropic compression then constant pressure heat addition 
then then isentropic expansion and then constant pressure heat rejection so 1 2 3 4 we will have these four processes all right now let us think little bit that I have shown all ideal processes. If I, if I think of, I mean non-ideal situation, what will happen? So, 1 to 2 isentropic compression. So, that will not remain isentropic. What will happen? Entropy will what? Due to, due to irreversibility, what will happen? Entropy will increase or decrease? Increase. increase. So, in this direction, the process will go, all right. Then, that is there, that is taken care of by this, okay. okay. Only thing is that we have assumed the pressure will remain constant, but the pressure will not remain constant. Okay. So, instead of this constant pressure line, we will get a different, different line which will not, I mean as the process, uh, I mean as the there is a change in temperature, there will be change in pressure, yeah, yeah, drop in pressure due to friction, due to friction there will be a drop in pressure. Okay, uh, <coughs> what you are thinking, I, 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 I can understand it that there is a heat addition process that is if it increases temperature that can increase also pressure. Now, it is like this that the gas which is there that is not in confined condition. So, it is, it is moving, but obviously when it is moving there will be it has to go through pipe, pipes or conduits. So, where there will be frictional loss. Okay. But, so, they, uh, what is the essence of this that I have shown a constant pressure heat addition that will not <coughs> remain. Okay. Let us say 3 is our end point, we are mainly concerned with these two isentropic processes. So, here also there will be increase in entropy. So, the expansion process will also be something like this and obviously, here there will be pressure drop. Okay. So, something like that we will get in actual cycle, whereas ideal cycle ignores all these losses. Now, <coughs> the efficiency, calculation of efficiency is very easy. We can write eta Breton that is equal to W net by Q 1. So, this is Q 1 minus Q 2 by q1 that is equal to 1 minus q2 by q1 all right and <coughs> we can have uh, this is 1 minus q2 is it is constant constant pressure heat addition so we will have cp t3 minus sorry this is t q2 so t4 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 minus t1 divided by cp t3 minus t2 just like our previous case we will do the analysis so we will have 1 minus t1 by t2 then here we will have T4 by T1 minus 1 and T3 by T2 minus 1. We can do the <coughs> we can do the uh, uh, do the analysis so that T4 by T1 and T3 by T2 one can calculate starting from the point 1 and assuming these two processes are isentropic process P V to the power gamma is equal to constant, alright. 
So, assuming these two processes to be isentropic process, one can do the analysis and if we do the analysis, then we will have eta Brayton is equal to 1 minus 1 by r to the power gamma, this is gamma minus 1, where r is compression ratio. r is compression ratio. So, we will have same expression as the diesel cycle, sorry auto cycle. We will have the same expression as the auto cycle and compression ratio how are we defining? V 1 upon V 2, V 1 upon V 2, all right. So, let me write it eta Brayton is equal to 1 minus 1 by r to the power gamma minus 1, all right. But you see, uh, when we are dealing with internal combustion engine, so a piston is moving. So, we know different volumes what is the total volume, what is the clearance volume. So, in terms of volume we are talking. Here in case of gas turbine cycle, gas is moving in the compressor. There generally we do not talk about the volume, we talk about initial pressure, final pressure or in terms of the pressure ratio of the compression. Whereas, in case of internal combustion engine, we talk in terms of volume in that case, we will talk in terms of pressure or pressure ratio. So, obviously, instead of compression ratio, we would like to use the pressure ratio. Compression ratio is basically a ratio of the two volumes, there we will like to use ratio of two pressures. So, if we do that, then eta Brayton will be 1 minus 1 by R p pressure ratio and then gamma minus 1 by gamma, all right. And R p pressure ratio is the highest pressure by the lowest pressure P 2 by P 1. Yeah, the cycle operates between, between two pressures. So, R p is equal to P 2 by P 1. So, let me write R p pressure ratio. So, you see <coughs> the pressure ratio is very crucial in case of Brayton cycle because the cycle efficiency depends on the pressure ratio. So, <coughs> what will happen? The more the pressure ratio what will what will we get? What will we get if we increase the pressure ratio, if we decrease the pressure ratio? We will get more efficiency, at least thermodynamically we will get more efficiency. But what happens in actual practice <coughs> that is one of the difference between the gas turbine cycle and the Rankine cycle. See gas turbine cycle is also a steady flow cycle and Rankine cycle is also similar type of a cycle. And if we compare between <coughs> gas turbine cycle and Rankine cycle, there are some sort of similarity. See, we had, <coughs> we have instead of a boiler, some device which is supplying thermal energy, then we are having turbine, then just like a condenser, we are having some device where we are exchanging heat or rejecting heat. Then just like pump, we have got a compressor, but the main problem is pump handles a non-compressible liquid, okay, incompressible liquid. So, only very small amount of power is needed to run the pump, but compressor handles a compressible fluid. As it compresses the fluid more and more, the temperature of the fluid that increases and the effort needed effort needed 
for further compression that also increases. So, the compressor that takes I mean that takes away a very large chunk of work produced by the turbine. We have seen in case of calculation of Rankine cycle, I have told that in number of uh, situation we can neglect the pump work. When the boiler pressure, pr pressure is moderate, we can neglect the pump work. So, it is a small percentage of the turbine work. But here we can see if we do some calculation that the compressor work is 30 percent, almost 30 percent, 40 percent of the turbine work. So, <clears throat> we have to be very careful regarding the compressor. And we know if we increase the pressure ratio, then we will have more work drawn by the compressor and ultimately we will have we will suffer as far as the output is concerned. Output will reduce, get reduced. Okay. And also the irreversibility, what I have drawn here, that increases with the compression ratio. Okay. So, keeping all this in mind, there is a restriction that we cannot increase the pressure ratio to a very great extent. But gas turbine cycles are very important cycles. In certain cases, it is it is a must. We, 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 it has got so many leverage over the other cycles. What are that those things? It is very compact. Volume to power ratio could be quite high, uh, rather power to volume ratio. That means, power developed to the, to the volume of the power plant that will be quite high, okay. it could be made lightweight and within a very short period of time, it can produce peak power in a boiler from starting to having the peak generation, it takes some time, Kintu whereas, uh, but whereas uh, in case of uh, gas turbine power plant, we will have the peak power within a very short period of time. So, with load fluctuation, this, this power plant adjusts itself very well. So, that is why for mobile systems like aircraft etcetera, gas turbine power plant is a very good choice. So, we have to do something so that we will not also lose in the efficiency or in the output. So, the basic uh, Breton cycle which I have shown that is rarely used, we have different modifications of Breton cycle. Now, we will see what are the different modifications of Breton cycle that is possible. And I think that is one of the reason um, we, we, we also uh, try to select sometimes gas turbine cycle for marine systems that it has got, it is compact and power generated could be, peak power generated could be quite fast and it can, uh, the fluctuation of load it can accommodate well. And probably a mixture of uh, gas turbine and steam turbine um, combined together that can give lot of desirable features what we want from a power plant. So, first thing what we will see that well <coughs> if we consider this basic Breton cycle here the gas is coming out of the turbine the product of combustion, but it can still have the it, its temperature is still higher compared to the ambient air. So, obviously, it will have some um, energy uh, along with it um, which we can tap instead of leaving it to the ambient atmosphere or to the sink. So, we can tap certain amount of energy. <coughs> so, that can be done by by, by some heat exchanger and we can recover certain amount of heat from the exhaust gas. So, that is what we can do and that heat will be utilized for for no, 
this is this will be utilized for heating the air before it goes for combustion. So, we will need lesser amount of fuel to be burnt in the combustion chamber all right. So, we will show this process. Well, what you are telling that from the exhaust gas we can generate steam and uh, do uh, things like that. Yeah, uh, that is some sort of a mixed cycle where we are having both steam generation and gas turbine. So, there could be different type of designs, but what I like to discuss when I am discussing the S standard cycle that is different variation only in the Breton cycle not bringing any other cycle all right. So, what we can do is like this, we have got the compressor, uh, then this is the air which is coming, then this is the air which is coming out of the compressor and that will be heated by the exhaust gas. Let us say this is one stream, this is another stream and here again there will be heat rejection. Ultimately this is the heat rejection and then this gas will go to the combustion chamber where combustion will take place, then it will go to the turbine while expansion and useful work one can get, this is the turbine. So, from the turbine this gas then like this. So, what are the different important points? 1, then this is 2, this is 3, this is 4, then this is 5, this is 5 and this is 6, then this 6 and 1. We can have the cycle diagram in the PV plane. Now, <clears throat> it is like this not much different from the other cases. So, basically 1, 2, 2 to up to 4, this is a constant pressure process, heat addition at constant pressure. Then 4 to sorry, uh, this is 4, 4 to 5, this is expansion process and one can take it isentropic expansion. Then 4, 5 to 1 is again constant pressure heat rejection process. Only thing is that between process 2 to 4, 2 to 3, this is by the exhaust gas, heat addition by exhaust gas and 3 to 4, we have put external heating. And here also, we can have 5 to 6, this is by the heat loss to the incoming air and this is heat rejection. So, this means this process is internal. This process is internal process. All right. And one can write efficiency eta is equal to 1 minus q 2 by q 1 and in this case 1 minus q 2, what is q 2? Is, is constant pressure 
T six minus T one and here it is C P T T four minus T three. All right. So this is your Q one and this is your Q two. All right. Yeah. So two, three, five, six. Just you can see two, three, five, six. These are the points. All right. So this is how we can save certain amount of fuel, and this is done because gas turbine exhausts are at high temperature. So that waste heat we can. Recover or we can utilize. This is called a regenerator. This heat exchanger is called a regenerator because it is internally heating. So just like we had regenerative feed heating in case of steam turbine or steam power cycle, so here also it is called regenerator. All right. So let me give the name. Regenerator. All right. Now, <coughs> this is one way of increasing the efficiency. Now, uh, regenerator. Okay, it it may be of some interest. Sometimes it serves number of other purposes. One is day by day the environmental. Uh, uh, I mean. norms are becoming stringent and stringent regulations so obviously when you are putting a very hot exhaust to the ambient atmosphere so you are creating thermal pollution so this is i mean to some extent better as far as thermal pollution is concerned yeah at least at a lower temperature it is being exhausted then from the strategic point of view if a very hot exhaust gas comes out then it is very easier for for the enemy to detect by thermal this uh, yeah detector. so thermal detection is possible when you are having a very hot exhaust okay so that is why also sometimes it is uh, i mean convenient particularly for uh, i mean <coughs> They, these are not for civil application, but for military application. That we should have the exhaust at a lower temperature. This can be used for controlling knots and shocks of the air, also. Yeah. So uh, no, that uh, we cannot knock knocks and uh, issue. We we cannot um, we cannot discuss uh, within this small period of time. So actually, that depends at what temperature the combustion is taking place, particularly. in no x generation combustion chamber uh, temperature but obviously when you are having a mixed cycle um, so one can have lot of options to take care of those things okay so <coughs> actually um, i mean the uh, pollution problem is bit com complex because if we go for high temperature then it is one way good that we are creating lesser amount of carbon monoxide all the carbons are totally oxidized to produce carbon dioxide which is a safer gas okay so in this type of turbines we are not using high sulfur fuels here the fuel used is never high sulfur mm, no, no, same sulfur. concept but the same concept is utilized for knox and shock chamber like you bring the exhaust and then again we burn in the ice engine and then yeah uh, I'll, I'll 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 tell you a few things uh, when this issue has come out means in case of internal combustion engine if we have to um, control the pollution there are different techniques one of them is reburning the reburning the um, uh, product of combustion or recycling part of it but uh, well that could be one method but not a very good method because uh, it gives partial solution 
So, what one wants to do nowadays? It is by catalytic converter. So, catalytic converter till date is the better uh, solution. Why I will tell you? There are different strategies. One strategy is that you spray water. See, it is like this that we if we increase the temperature of combustion, that is good because it is giving me lesser carbon monoxide. But that is bad again because it is giving me, I mean it is more prone to NOx formation. Whereas, catalytic converter, the way we select the catalytic converter, it can take care of three types, mainly three types of pollutants. One is HC, that means whatever remaining hydrocarbons are there, carbon monoxide and NOx. Okay. So, the way it does the reaction, it takes care of these three things. So, that is why though the water injection or the recycling of the burnt product are some partial solution of pollution problem, but they are not the complete solution and, and uh, well for, uh, at today's point of view catalytic converter is the best solution. Okay. Now, <coughs> but pollution definitely is a very important issue and uh, in gas turbine cycle also it is important issue. What uh, one of you have uh, pointed out is that we burn low sulphur fuel, okay. that is true, but nowadays people are talking in terms of fuel mix and using some sort of fuel which are not very conventional one and particularly when we are going for stationary power plants. Okay, gas turbine nowadays are used for stationary power plants also to a large extent. Of course, in this, that case it will be combined with a steam turbine power plant along with it. We will have two cycle, one is a topping cycle, one is a bottoming cycle. We will have two types of cycles and in that those cases we will have different type of fuels mm, and particularly definitely we will have try to have low, low, yes. low steam cost steam fuels, yes. low cost fuels. So, in those cases different type of um, techniques we have to take. Of course, if it is a stationary power plant, we can afford having separate unit for the pollution control, means exhaust gas we can treat and then the gaseous effluent can be put to the atmosphere. Okay. Those are not within the scope of our discussion, but those are possible. In case of uh, mobile power plant, we do not have a very high sulphur content in the fuel. Well, <clears throat> so here you see that one need, needs to know, uh, one needs to know what? T6 we need to know and we need to know T3. So, basically the regener regenerator some details are to be known, otherwise we cannot do this analysis. Okay, that of course taking a standard heat exchanger and what type of uh, effectiveness we can allow, what type of temperature difference. See, terminal temperature difference is very important. T2 and T6, these are the two temperature at which the gases are coming close together. So, there should be some difference, means if it is only 2 degree Celsius, then there will not be any any heat transfer, any effective heat transfer. So, terminal temperature difference and effectiveness, considering all those details, one can work out this temperature and then efficiency can be determined. So, I think I will stop here, uh, not much is left in as far as gas turbine cycles are concerned, we will complete that and then we will start heat transfer. Thank you.